How's it going everyone? This is Kevin. Today I want to bring you along with me to show you how I created my own Pro Mist filter with just a cheap clear filter and some hairspray. So let's jump right into it. So the purpose of a pro mist filter is to basically make your shots a little bit less digital. They're a little bit more to kind of lift the shadows and make the highlights a little bit less harsher because a lot of the times with light, surprise, uh, with the, the with a light source, you wanna make it a little bit softer so it becomes more cinematic. That's why you see a lot of people's uh, photos, especially at night, look a lot softer. It's all because of a pro mist filter. So I've been kind of shopping around and trying to think about which one I would wanna get and everything in between. And it just kind of came to me to see if there was an alternative, to see if there's something that I can make myself. Because I have this clear um, filter that came with my camera like as a little package and it's like just a cheap little clear filter that I'm not using obviously. So I was like, hey, is there something online that I can find to see what the best outcome could be to make my own Pro Mist filter or what does it take to make one? So I kind of, after digging around a lot, there's a couple options that you can do. There's people that say that you can use some black spray paint and make it like very soft so that it also gets the shadows lifted some people use hairspray so i want to try out the hairspray alternative because i don't have any black spray paint sadly and i want to see how good it works so this is the filter right here i'm going to hold it up to it that's what it looks like with the clear filter on obviously i don't think there's much of a difference i'm looking at my screen up here to see um, I mean, it just, it's a clear filter, so it's not gonna really do too much. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and do the hairspray method to see how much difference it does with the lens and without it, and see if it really does compare to a ProMist filter. I'm not obviously gonna compare it to a ProMist filter because I don't own one, but I've seen enough to just kind of see the difference of what it could make with a ProMist filter and without. So I'm kind of just gonna go off of that and see how good it does for having a little cheap filter and some hairspray. So the secret is to just use whatever hairspray you have. This is my wife's and I'm so sorry if it's an expensive one. I'm not gonna use a lot of it, so. All right, so we have our hairspray and we have our filter. So all you do really is just spray it up like this and then just kind of go across it, boom. That's basically what you do as desired as you want it because it starts catching some of the particles here. So you just kind of go with how much you want. So you just go spray and then catch, spray and then catch. Some people did, a, I mean, that I've seen, they do like maybe five, six times. You start seeing how much of this, the particles start going up. So I'm just gonna do a couple more and then test out the lens. So here we go. So this is the filter we just made. As you see, if I turn it a little bit, that way you kind of get the reflection of the lights and everything. Um, those little dots is what I added with basically from the hairspray. So it was a clear filter, but now you see, as I get it closer, um, how little kind of dots you get from the hairspray. So you don't want them to be too clumped up in a sense of chunky. You want it to be as soft and spread out but still tied up together where it's not just big lumps of hairspray this is without it and then i'm going to put it on in front that's see how now the like highlights look softer it makes it more like dreamy cinematic kind of looking obviously you want to add as much as you want on it to either have a lot more or a lot less but this is the the outcome of it this is with the filter that's without so you can kind of see a little bit of a comparison just quick so what i'm going to do is just put it on top and then start screwing on my lens basically just like so and that is basically my good old um pro mist filter the cool thing about this little cheap um filter is i can actually put my nd filter over it and screw it in so if i want to have that pro mist filter with my nd uh, variable nd 
it's perfect. I know Peter McKinnon came out with his. Sadly, it's like $250, which as much as I want to spend $250 on a ProMist ND, variable ND filter, I don't. So I kind of just want to use what I have. So hopefully this will be a cheap alternative for you. So I got my setup right here. I'm just gonna take a photo of myself over there where I was filming um, and see how it looks with the filter and then without. So right now I have it on. So the first photo will be with it and then I'll show you without and then I'll show you a comparison of um, side by side basically of the photos. So now that you've seen the comparison, which one do you like best? The without or with the homemade Promis filter? I don't know if you noticed any differences or was it very obvious or not. Leave me down below a comment and say, you know, your thoughts about it and what you think so far about this homemade Promis filter. One thing that I noticed straight up the bat right away is that with the Promis filter, it does get a lot softer, more dreamy look, which is kind of cool, something that it's takes away the digital look of it in my opinion, which is the purpose of a ProMist filter to make it a lot softer with the, the type of shot that it is with the light and everything in between. So, so far right away, I mean, that's something that I really like. That's why I was so curious to kind of build this myself and see an alternative to, instead of buying a ProMist filter, I mean, you can buy one for like 60, 70 bucks. Some of them range in the 250 range if you get the Peter McKinnon one. So pick and choose your battles, I guess, and what you want. But I mean, for having this little clear filter that came with my camera, or I think one of my lenses that I bought, I can't even remember at this point, it's been quite a while, thought it would be great to just test it out with the hairspray that I had lying around. So, so far, I think it's a very cool little gadget. So I don't know what you've been thinking about it. Would you do this instead of buying an actual ProMist filter? Yeah, I mean, to me, I think this will hold me off for a while until I decide to really pull the trigger on a pro mist filter that's more professional, I guess. But that's just what it is. Right now I'm gonna test it out with just here with the video settings of my camera. Obviously a lot of these ProMist filters are more for catering to taking away that digital look to add a little bit more film-like style. So that's one of the reasons why people like to shoot with these. And I mean, for me, that's why I picked a mirrorless camera to get more of the digital, obviously, but I do like to have the option to kind of go between back and forth. So I'm gonna put it on and just see how the video aspect goes. So this, so this is without the filter. This is what it looks like. I mean, the light is on my face. This is how it looks. It's not as soft, it's a little bit more digital looking, obviously with the highlights and everything like that. So I'm gonna put on the Pro Mist filter that we just made and see how it looks. And then this is with the filter on. Can you notice a difference? Is it too subtle or is it very obvious? To me, I mean, I'm, from what I can see on the screen, I mean, I see a little bit more glowing, obviously, which is what this is intended to do with the, the light source and everything like that with the highlights. So, I mean, obviously this isn't the setting that I would normally use it with, but, this is what it looks like with that. We're gonna go and turn on a couple lights and just kind of show you the with and without just to see the basically the differences of that to see how it would play out as well. And I'll also do a bit of photos and video with that part so that you can see the difference. So here we go. Here is without the filter and showing you with the light source how it looks. So here we are with the ProMist filter on. I'm gonna turn on the light just to show you how it'll look and see if you notice a softer look or not. And that way you can compare it without the filter. So which one did you like better, with or without? Could you tell a big difference? What, did you see how softer it was or how digital look with the other one? What are your thoughts on that? I mean, to me, I think the Pro Mist filter seems to be pretty cool with the light sources, just to make them just enough softer so that it's not just so harsh on the video and on photos, obviously. But we're gonna do the photo section right now and kind of see what it looks like 
with and without the filter and just give you a prime example of it i'm going to try to do a light source where i can be in front of it as well to show you the harshness of the light on my face versus without i mean right now i'm still filming with the promise filter so you can kind of I guess see the glowing effect of it, if you will. But we're gonna go test it out on a little bit more of the photography department with more lights because, well, that's a lot of the things that I've seen, obviously people use it for. So maybe it'll be helpful for you as well to see. So let's get a couple photos taken. So here is my setup. I'm gonna try to focus it on there. So there you go. We have the little lamp and then basically a little bit of the light coming through from the shades and I'm gonna just sit on the pillow kinda area and take a photo without the filter first and then with it and show you the comparisons. And now we're gonna slap on the good old um, Promis homemade filter. So let's see how it turns out. So did you notice a subtle difference at all or even much? I mean, to me, I can tell the difference just because I know how it, or what it's doing in a sense. And obviously with the edits and everything like that, that you want to kind of keep it as close as possible. It is what it is, but it's supposed to be a subtle difference. And that's my ultimate goal with it. Cause you don't want to be too, too, I guess, obvious with it, if that makes any sense. So to me about having that extra subtle difference where it just takes a little bit of the harshness away is the ultimate goal for me for my Promis filter, if that makes sense. So for you, you might want it to do a little bit more. So you might spray on it a little bit further. You might spray on it a little bit less. So the beauty about it is what makes you happy and proud of your work. For me, this is like the perfect solution with how much I wanted to add to it to make it work for my style. So what is your conclusion about it? Is it worth it to have a Promis filter or is it worth it to even buy one or just create yourself one. For me, it's worth it to just honestly create my own. For how much that I'll be using it, I think it'll be fine to just go with this little route because with it, I mean, I can just have a little bit of that kind of digital noise removed a little bit to just make it a little bit softer and just make it, I guess, more complete for my work. I'm excited to put it more to the test with photos at night and everything. So once I decide to do that, I'll probably make another video about it just to show you what it is to use a Promis filter at night for the good old homemade version of it and see how much of a cool kind of dynamic range I can do with this because of getting a little bit softer look and everything in between. So I'm excited to put it more to the test. I just want to do a little bit of a quick video for you guys to make your own if you're wanting to make one yourself. And if you didn't feel like spending like the 60, 70 bucks that you can spend on one, and if you already had a clear one lying around, then might as well use it. A lot of the times when you buy a lens from the like Adorama, b and Amazon, all those places, they give you a lot of like filters. And a lot of them are kind of just whatever and crappy anyway, like this one. So I didn't mind just spraying it down and hoping that it would work out. And so far, I think it works pretty great. So I'm excited to just use it and put it to good use. So hopefully this helped you out to get more educated on how to make your own Promis filter at home. If you have one of these bad boys or if you want to just buy a $5 like little filter instead of having to spend $60, $70 that you don't have around cool alternative to have in my opinion. But with all that said and done, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure to like and subscribe, share this video with a friend, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya.